Today I'm going to be talking about thymus cancer, the top signs of it, as well as two, two inexpensive ideas that you can do right now to help you prevent ever getting it. Now before I get started, uh, down below you'll notice there's a link and I'm giving away a free video based guide on using various dietary supplements and alternative medicine. Now I want you to do something. I want you to take your right hand and touch your chest, chest area, okay? Right above where you think your heart could be. And where you're touching right now, there's something called the thymus gland. That's where it's located, okay? And when a baby's born, see, their immune system isn't the strongest because the immune system gets kind of stronger by recognizing various viruses and building up defense system. That's why the flu vaccine you get dead strains of the flu virus so your body can recognize and go oh okay that's how we defeat it let's build a plan so that's why a, you know, a baby's immune system is not the strongest and uh, I like to think of the thymus gland as like an added little defense system to help the baby survive until it reaches adolescence okay once somebody has puberty the gland actually slowly shrinks and it gets turned into fat now you might be wondering, well, why the heck does it shrink? Why didn't it just stay there and like help people with their immune system, right? It's a good question. Well, one of its main job is to create something called T cells, which are basically important for the immune system. Now, once all the T cells are, are marching around the body, well, it's not as useful, and so it kind of gets replaced by fat. And I guess the body thinks stored fat there is more useful. I don't know. But the body's pretty smart, so, right? Now, the good news is the thymus cancer is pretty rare, um, but there's some bad news to this. For starters, many of the brightest and smartest people in the health industry, well, they're not really sure what the main risk factors are. You know, this makes it a lot more challenging to prevent because you don't know what the culprits are. Now, the biggest risk factor is something called, well, is age which is pretty much the biggest risk factor of any disease, right? So it doesn't really help too much, but supposedly the older somebody is, the higher chance of, the, of them getting this type of cancer. Now, the symptoms of thymus cancer are also kind of difficult to notice. Uh, one sign could be pain in the region. A person can experience a cough and, and possibly trouble breathing. Uh, other symptoms could be having like a difficult time swallowing weight loss, not being as hungry as a person normally is. And lastly, the gland is right up near the main artery that delivers blood to the, to the brain. And if a cancer tumor presses on its artery, which could definitely happen, it could affect the brain too. And well, that's not good. This can, be, this can bring about swelling uh, where the thymus gland is located, um, even swelling in the, in the facial area, headaches not being able to think clearly. Um, also, there could be no symptoms. And the only way to truly tell if you have this problem is, of course, get a checkup, in which it's another reason why getting a checkup can be very valuable, since you can catch problems that you may not even notice and then stop them. And, of course, save your life. Now, to prevent this type of cancer, there really are two ideas that I just want to throw your way, let you kind of uh, think about. One would be eating cooked mushrooms and drinking green tea. Okay. Now, in the issue of International Journal of Cancer, researchers discovered that women who ate 10 grams of mushrooms a day had two-thirds the protection from developing cancer than women who ate no mushrooms. Now, you might be wondering, why cooked mushrooms? Well, it's a good question. The reason is, if you eat cooked mushrooms, well, you have, your body has an easier time digesting it. Also, you can kill off any unwanted bacteria that may be on them that you don't see. So, that's good. Now, when it comes to tea, there's tons and tons of studies out there that show that it contributes to stopping the supply of blood to cancer and helping them die. And we, we want them to die. We do. Now, in a study at the University of uh, Strathclyde in Glasgow, Scotland, if I pronounced that right, uh, researchers injected cancer tumors uh, with a substance and green tea and I'm, uh, I'm attempt to pronounce this the substance in green tea that they injected into the cancer tumors is called epigalassotechin gallet 
say that five times fast. Uh, the result was that nearly two out of three tumors shrank or disappeared within one month. And again, these items I'm mentioning to you, they're, they're super cheap and you can use them today. And interestingly enough, I actually read a book called Anti-Cancer. I forget who the author was, but it's a great book all about natural remedies on cancer. And he mentioned green tea and cooked mushrooms a bunch in the book, okay? So that's some good stuff there. All right. Now, if supplements and alternative medicine, this kind of stuff sounds interesting to you, can, can be helpful. Like I mentioned, I do highly recommend that free video guide I created. It uh, talks about tips on shopping for supplements. It simplifies herbal remedies, goes over some great alternative choices on what to take for various health problems and conditions that can not only save you money, but will be very good for you. Okay, And it's free. So and it's fun. Why not? And to learn more, just click on the link below this video. So I hope this video might have been helpful. If you have any other ideas on stopping cancer or uh, about fighting this cancer, please leave a comment. I would really appreciate that. And if you like the video, also you know, give me the, the thumbs up. <laughs> that helps me a lot. So uh, all right, we'll have a great rest of your day. Okay, take care. Bye.